All right, guys. So, good morning. Good morning. Today we are going to be doing the water pump on my trailblazer. Started leaking out. I put the ink on it, and um, it's just dripping like crazy. So it has to come out. So the first thing we're going to be doing is taking out the, the intake, disconnecting the manifold, the manifold, the uh, muscle flow sensor, uh, getting the fan clutch out, then the belt, this plastic, and the hoses. I already have a, a pan on the bottom to catch all the water. And I'm going to see if I don't have to remove the radiator, I might as well do the crank seal. So, let me see what I can come up with. But first of all, like always, uh, let me see if I can see you guys in a better position, a little bit, a little bit higher. Alright, here we go. That's a better spot. It kind of shows pretty much everything. So, let me go ahead and remove the intake piping so we can start seeing lower and then we gotta remove that fan see what we can do all right so we got the, that one here the one here and don't forget to unplug the mass air flow okay, we got hoses and everything but the next thing that we're gonna be doing It's um, taking the fan clutch out. All right, let's try this real quick. Now this is a fairly new fan clutch. So it shouldn't really take that much to get it out. <clears throat> no, no. You guys are going to say, well, we don't have that tool. You don't need it. But if you tap on it to kind of turn the, the nut this way to the left hand side of the vehicle, it should break loose. And then you should be able to take it out. Now this thing now, and typically you can use something like this to tap on it and break it loose. But you know, sometimes you do not have the tools. Alright, so next thing we're going to be doing, we have to remove this plastic so we can take the paint clutch out and all this stuff so that being said let's remove this new hose that I just put on the other day okay, guys. apparently People that have been working on this car before, they used to use the wrong clamps. And they kind of bite into the It was kind of biting into the rubber. So that's the one thing that you don't want to do. Now remember, I had the ink on this thing. The ink is messy. Alright, 
Alright, the next thing, remove our belt. Get our tension off. You can always just take a picture of the belt itself. So the diagram. Or just search it online. So we're kind of almost there. Right, let's take these guys out. Kind of mine is seeing better days. Well, it's broken, and they already tried to fix it somehow. So at least now I have to fix it. Two lines there that are kind of hooked up. These two lines, they're kind of hooked up on the thing. Now I do want to get a standard oil cooler for, for the transmission. It just seems to go back into the radiator, but yet it gets pretty hot and, and it's changed the transmission gets pretty hot. So if I can avoid that, I will try my best to see for inspection we do have to get a belt for the compressor. It's already cracked. So mm -hmm. And it looks like we're dripping also over here. Yeah. Okay, so let's take the tensioner off the uh, off the water pump itself. So at the end of the day, we will need to take that out. If you don't want to keep anything loose, just gonna keep it like that, put it aside. But I am otro. Alright, guys, so now what we're gonna be doing is um, 
the other day I put a new thermostat in there but I don't know I'm debating if I should get all the new hoses that way to kind of don't ever have to touch this thing again that would be it so that's the dilemma that I'm in well it is what it is Yeah, this thing is almost like a 13 by now. I don't know why I still have it in there. Let it drain in a control manner. I would love to get it. Ink out of the system. So that's that. Now we're gonna go ahead and start. We have two more hoses here on the side. Uh, we got a eight. And we're gonna have a little bit of extension. Now there's two hoses. The side of that water pump, they use the clamp, the wrong type of clamp, and it's, it's biting into the rubber like it's not from the So I'm gonna see if I can get rid of that and get something decent in there. The thing is about finding that size. Be right back, guys. I'm gonna see what it tap into. I might take him off and try to delete that 90 because uh, the hose is already kind of inflated. So if I could take him off with the quick connection that they have, I could try to just cut the pipe and, and add a new section to it. I might just do that. Alright, so now the next thing we got, basically the water pump is already kind of free. Now we just got to bolt three, three bolts here and three bolts on the other side. And I think that she should be able to come out. And those are going to be 10 mil.
bolso que eu não vi. It's a little bit tight there. See, you can try water through there. Oh yeah. Dripping water right through the hole. Yep. Right through the hole she was dripping water. So that means that this pump and guess what? It's a new pump, basically. See how it drips through there? It's a GM pump and it's leaking. And that's something. Okay guys, so uh, alright. So now we will be removing this hose. They actually put it on the other side. So, that being said, uh, I got the belt coming on its way. Let's see. And I also have the crank fully. The crank fully. The crank fully. <laughs> That's fun. The um, front seal cover. Oh, not cover. Round seal for the crank. I got that coming. So might as well tear into this thing once. Let's see, and I think that could pick it up. See that kind of crack right there. 
so and it has that crack kind of everywhere so that's a bad belt and should I put a new belt I probably should for the 17 belt as well let me call and find out Alright guys, so while I was on the phone, took my impact and uh, loosen up the bolt. It was tight. It was tight. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get my extractor so we can set it up and start pulling the crank pulley. Alright guys, so I got my pulley set up. Now I am going to show you guys the trick because uh, regular pullers, they don't have a long enough rod on it. So what I typically do is, I leave the only on stand, just pull it out a little bit. Okay. So we can get it started. And pull, I'm gonna pull out as much as I possibly can. Okay, to reach away. And this is what I did. Took a regular stud, cut the head on it, and it fits right in. Okay. And then just put a little bit of pressure on the head of the bolt. Okay. Doesn't create any damage or anything at all. So typically, she's still tight. Now let me see if I remember the other side, the other half. Alright, <clears throat> so let's keep on taking this thing out. I'll show you guys here in a second. What's the other trick? So now I'll take that bolt down. We got our pulley out. And what I have in there is a longer bolt. You can see the difference. They are the same thread. I knew I have bought this in the past. I had to search it in a toolbox. But usually this trick works for almost all the Chevys. If I have it correctly. Same thread. Slightly longer. You put it in, you thread it a little bit. And then you can hook up into it. Boop, boop, boop. Take it all out. So that's the trick. Now let me go ahead and remove that seal. If you guys can see that, but that's where the seal is. We're gonna pop that out once they bring me the other one because I want to make sure it's the right one. If not, I want to be stranded. But uh, yep. Let me see if I if I could clean all the surroundings. That way, I make sure that my next oil leak will be from the oil pan, not from up here. So. Let me clean that up and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so I took the hose off. 
This one goes to the top of the head on this side here. Uh, I did a bypass to the throttle body because it was leaking before underneath of it. So I will have to find another clamp, smaller clamp. Uh, and these are the hoses that connect to the water pump. As you can see, see what I did to it? That clamp. And the hose itself is kind of inflated. But look at this. That's what that clamp did to it. So what I'm thinking of doing is, since the hose is already inflated, I'm probably just going to cut the pipe and put my hose straight from, from here down to the pump. <coughs> clip, clip. And sorry, I got hiccups. <laughs> and connect it back into the into the position. So let me go ahead and get that done. I'm gonna try to cut it as close as I can there. That way I have enough uh, aluminum. And I'm uh, crying later that I cut too much. All right, be right back. All right, guys. So a front seal came in. We are going to double check and it looks like it's the same diameter so we're going to be pulling that out also i already connect uh cut the pipes so i'll be connecting that here in a little bit i still got to figure out see how this hose is a little bit bigger it's kind of loose in place so i still got to figure that part out and i do want to correct that before I keep on going any farther so but let me change the uh, that seal let's see if I can get my hooks there yeah, back all right guys so what we're gonna do is with this okay has a little edge to it. If it's a seal and the crank is obviously in the center, we want to go inside of it to like the wall there, okay? Something like that, and then pry against the crank so you can get it out. And the damn thing should come out. I am gonna put some grease in here just to have a little bit lubricated where it sits on the crank it does have a lip on the back of the crank um, thing housing or cover so you want to make sure that you clean everything and what I like to do is obviously I already took it out so I'm going to get my grease in there before I put this guy in I like to put a little bit of silicone on the outside of it that way when it goes in it's not going to leak out through the outside we are back All right, so this is what I like to do get the silicone kind of just go over the edge doesn't have to be crazy much we just want to, in between those grooves, get some silicone. That way, when it goes into the circle, it really seals properly. All right. Now let me go ahead and get some grease so we can put it in the center of it.
The other thing that you might want to double check is if it actually fits on the crank itself. If it does, you obviously you're good to go. I don't know if you want to call this uh, packing the seal or what, but. High rain cars, the seals they come packed with oil, not oil, oil grease on it. So, why not? It can't hurt. Alright, so we got our silicone at the grease I'm going to center it in the hole the next thing is you want to get some like this obviously this is to remove the uh, nut on an axle on a differential for a Chevy but over the years I've been cutting off the little nipples that it had it had like I can't remember if it's like 12 nipples or something but I've been cutting it to modify it to different <laughs> locations and now it's completely flat so to press out bearings and whatnot it really helps out eventually I'll get another one <laughs> whenever I get to one of those jobs again removing the axle on a heavy Chevy so as you can see that helped out to put that in place very very easily we're gonna take the ax the extra silicone that came to the front we're gonna take that off we're gonna clean it Let me show you guys how that looks. There we go. Clean shot of that. Go ahead and see you guys back here. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is, obviously I already cleaned out everything. Everything is clean. The next thing you want to do is make a pulley. Now, if you can see, it has a little recess on it on the front, and then the shiny part is where the seal kind of grinds on. It's going to wipe this thing down a little bit. All right. And that looks pretty sturdy and clean. So, let me get this green stuff off this thing bear right back all right guys so now this is clean okay and we have a little bit of uh, grease on it now obviously it's not long enough but we have our sheeta now I just gotta find a big nut on it to compensate and kind of start pulling in the so we can start pulling in the harmonic balancer I guess I could do it with the installer kit that comes in here but I don't like taking a risk Well, then things stay in there and then I'm just going to this thing out. So, let me feel this part out real quick. Alright, so what we got is the same bolt, washer, and the thing for the installation kit. And this is going to grind 
on the uh, pulley itself. Now let me find a socket that will fit this thing. Well, you know, still is the same size as the actual pulley itself. Biting enough. Let me see if we get a shot if not. There we go. Very golden, guys. It is going really smooth like butter. So, again. This bolt does not have a full thread on it, so we're not going to be going in all the way. You just want to get it close enough to where the stock bolt will start threading. And then we just took it down with the impact. We almost went all the way in to this uh, original spot. There you go. Later innovation. Make that work. So now we can get our stock bolt. So that should be secure. See if I can pick up uh, the little bevel that the grease created. You can pick that up real quick right there. So yeah, pretty nice. Like that. Now it's just a matter of putting everything back together. Yeah. Our pulleys are still good. We have our new AC belt. We're gonna go behind the crank. We're gonna go over to the compressor. Get it on the tensioner. Okay. And then we're gonna turn the tensioner. Okay, so if you look in that position, the uh, belt that it had on it that it was cracked, it had a lot more slack on it, so I just meant that it stretched out over time. So that's on there. That's Gucci. Alright, so now we're going to try to clean. Um, where the water pump seats, the seals. 
So let me get a new clean knife so we can start cleaning that up. I right, know you guys let me know if you guys like these long videos. It kind of shows a little bit better the process of how the job is done instead of uh, just showing you guys the tricks and how to get it done. I'm just trying to improve guys. I'm still even though I have quite a few videos. Still putting into this whole thing. Yeah, let's be realistic. I only have fifteen hundred just about subscriber. Which is an accomplishment, trust me. It's been a long journey. Getting to where the channel is at. I haven't gone viral. I have a few videos that they're pretty decent, but that virus status. So it's taking a minute. Eventually, I'll get somewhere. All right. So now that's clean. Now, in theory, in theory, we should just be able to bolt it on. And then we can start measure, measuring for our two hoses that we have to connect before we do anything else. But I still have this little issue here with this nipple. The nipple holes. I don't know what I'm going to do about this thing. So i got to figure that part out though. I really don't know because it looked like it was dripping on that side there and my clamps are you know, my clamps are good maybe try to get a smaller clamp on it and see if that will do the trick but for that I think I'm gonna have to remove let's see if I remove the bracket for the alternator and everything to come in forward, I might have enough space to actually work a little bit better on that nipple. So, let's see, we got one, two, three, four. We yeah, actually about three bolts, I think. One, two, three, four bolts. I might just take that off to kind of move this out of the way so we can figure that part out before I start getting everything a little bit tighter. Alright, so I think I might need a 15. I knew it was going to be a 15. But yeah, yeah. Try to get a... Uh, 17 on it. Whoa, 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 lady. You don't have space here for this. So we gotta go smaller. That's what she said. Alright, so let's break them all loose. Everything else can kind of just hold on tight for dear life. So now I suppose that in it. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Alright, so this nipple is supposed to go in there, and we got all these hoses on this other side. 
So what I'm going to do is I got to take this guy off. See what else I can put in here to tie that down. But definitely want to clean this mess up. Alright. Be right back. Alright guys. So I figured something out. I'm going to go ahead and connect my two aluminum hoses in the pipes I put a little grease on the pipe itself that way we have a smooth connection to the seal that way it's not being a pain in the ass later to get it off Supposed to be what it's supposed to be. Hopefully, these pipes didn't move a little bit. That's good. I pulled both ends of it. That way, now we have a good connection there so that we can get the uh, pipes in a clean surface. And I've got a tool here. Put it right on that lip. cleaner so we can clean that part and put the the alternator and all that bracket back on all right guys so went ahead and connected a line put this thing back together plug in our line on the side over here uh, now we're gonna go ahead and put the new water pump on it is an AC Delco water pump that I got. And the one that he had on the vehicle, it was an uh, DM AC Delco as well. Water pump. But for some reason, it leaked out. So, that's that. gasket that goes on the uh, uh, thermostat housing that wasn't there before and we require one AC vehicle water pump. Alright. We got our gaskets. Fuel just bolts in. Gasket. We'll do the same thing on the other side.
hate in this gasket right now. Yes, I can put some silicone to keep it in place. But I don't want to. Do. Get a little bit of oil. Because the furniture is going in too dry. And it's catching up. So I just put a little bit of grease. We can get it to go in a smooth. that's going in. And just the tiny hair of grease. So the metal doesn't fly with the aluminum. <coughs> you guys we're already on the Do this one by hand because it looks like that one is a little bit hurt. But I'm gonna see if I have a thread cleaner. Bye bye. All right, guys. So it has been a hefty, I don't know, 30 minutes trying to find freaking kid. That will have the actual thread pattern for the freaking bolts. So I think it's a 125, 8, 125, if I'm not mistaken. So we can actually clean this freaking thread on this thing. ahead and clean all of these threads out and now you can say that I have the kit right I'm chugging that thing for a minute now 
All right, so now I'm gonna clean all the threads on the uh, on the water pump. That way we can freaking put the water pump on. All right, be right back. All right, guys. So got any goddamn threads clean? You know the holes. Basically, what happens is that over time, the aluminum spins, contracts, or whatever, and being metal bolts, apparently, kind of makes an oscillation inside the thread. And that's what we got to deal with later. So, let's try this again. Let's put a little bit of crease in the threads. That way it will go as smooth. Take two. All right, so let's try this again. They're gonna be a take three on this thing. Take it out and see what's going on. Alright, guys, so finally, water pump is inside. Jesus. What a pain. Alright, so now. The next thing we gotta do is we gotta fix this two 90 degrees here on right? these two hoses to connect to the water pump. Then we have our thermostat that we gotta swap over, the housing and whatnot. So let's get on to fixing those two hoses there. Let me see where I put it. Well, here they are. All right, so I bought one with a pre-vent 90 on it, which is probably gonna come very helpful. That'll be probably very, very nice. So all I have to do is just kinda line it up. See where I bought, I'm gonna be cutting. 
And again, these pipes, they do move quite a bit, so... You just go ahead and cut one section off, that way I have a little bit more room to play with. The new bling that I already used to to scratch the surface, so it's no longer 100%. So let's see what else to do. Put it here. Let me get a new bling. It's going to be really crazy. So a new blade does the trick. And now I'm just gonna trim this back. I don't know which one is the new one, I think it's this one. I think that's that. Let's see if I can get my nice clamp on. And the baiting. There we go. Alright guys, so I did the two hoses on the side uh, off camera. So I just needed to get, get it done out of the way. But I'll show you guys how it's looking. It's pretty straightforward. Just uh, two 90s basically. Two clamps. I did use the type of clamps that I don't like to use, but you don't have to squeeze them down to where the hose is collapsing in a way of shrinking it or whatever so you need to make sure that it's not tight that it's not going to leak that's all you have to do you don't have to go crazy tiny type of meal all right so this is where we're at i'm going to go ahead and get the new lower hose Yeah, I should have one of those nicer clamps for this one. I just do have uh, the smaller one. So let me get this prepped. Are we almost there, guys? Right, so we got the thermostat, and apparently in this silicone, not silicone, but this gasket. They want you to use it, so I will use it even though the thermostat has its own gasket. But 
Hey. So I'm sure this thing is not gonna leave anywhere. So we got that. So Timosa housing is on. Let's get our Sure that everything is tight. Uh, let me go ahead and get the new hose on. Mm -hmm. So this is the type of clamp that I'm telling you guys. So it's still the same, but you see the inside is different. So let me figure out how the hose goes.
Make sure that it's stuck down there. Now I know that if I ever have to service that hose, it will be because I have to replace the radiator. And I know that will be facing up. So I wouldn't have to go in underneath the car to service that one. It's pretty much everything else um, facing the floor. It has been replaced. So if I ever have to go down there, it will be because of the radiator, I have to replace it. Alright, so everyone is tight and nice. Now we can go ahead and put our belt before having to I remember now how this belt went. Alright, so the diagram that I just have on is not it. Uh, the car doesn't have one. Let me try one more route. Alright, so I assume that that's going to be it. Nice where it's supposed to be. So we're gonna pump it here. So now we just gotta put the radiator, the top hose, and we should be able to start putting water in. So let's get our uh, self-tied themselves so all we have to do is snug it all the way to the, to the end there you go and we gotta get the hoses to go around the, the shredder to clip on do that from the bottom that way they don't touch the blade so let's see what else I got so 
Shredder being broken later. But for now, I'm gonna keep it there the way it is. Alright, so. Please, that's in place. I just gotta go on the bottom and get that. Let me connect the top holes. I think I just used one of the top holes. in place. Let's get our intake back on. Make our plug. Okay. Clamp is broken. Right. <clears throat> so everything it is connected. Always double check your lines. Everything is where it's supposed to be. Built is. Now we can start cleaning up. water in there so we can start the bleeding process. Alright, be right back. Alright guys, so again, we are bleeding on the system. We just want to take a look. Alright, last time you do the water pump and the uh, crane seal. And then the Trailblazer 5.3. Almost the same process for the six hour process. It's almost every uh, four eight, five three, six hour formulation. All of them do the same thing. Alright, guys, as always, share that subscribe. Uh, make sure that you get all the air bubbles out. Just turn on the heater, let it idle for a minute. Top off the uh, reservoir. Once the thermostat opens, the engine should start getting water in it and it will circulate, and then you can add on the water as you need to. As you can see, it's getting some of the air out of the system, so it'll be a minute, and probably next day you will have to top it off just to make sure that everything is running smooth. Alright, guys, like always, share that, subscribe.